Roger winning Wimbledon for an eighth time. United doing the treble. Arsenal not getting relegated. Momentous milestones immortalised in sport. But now, surpassed. For another milestone has been reached. The mighty Super Saiyan Andy San felled by one Rudy boy. Hello boys and girls, it's Rude Devil. And this is it, this is the moment. This is, finally, this, it happened. And I'm, I'm, you know how I'm always like, I don't want to spoil what happens in the video. Like, if it's like a 1v1, I don't want to spoil who wins, because otherwise, what's the point in watching it? But, this is it, man. At the, I don't know, what is this, like the 11th time, the 12th time of trying? I finally managed to beat Andy motherfucking San. We're on Lorien, Erin Lai, my favorite map. This is Gondor v um, Lorien, 1k star. We both went random. Uh, I'd actually already beaten him once today, um, but I didn't really feel like it was a worthy win because he basically just went Dunedain start as Rivendell. And it seems that even the great Andy San can't win as Rivendell on a Dunedain start. They're just too damn expensive. So, um, yeah, that was Gondor Rivendell. I won that one. That was pretty easy. Um, but this one was like a proper game, and uh, yeah, it was. I was just so hyped, and Addy's like, yeah, upload it, fine, Lauren sucks anyway. I'm like, okay, I have your blessing, thanks. Um, so here we go, this is um, uh, Gondor Lauren. So I open up with the regular farms as you would, we get the barracks out. Um, you want to get uh, pikemen, because obviously you want to get the, the uh, creep money, and uh, maybe even the troll money, uh, depending on how passive your uh, enemies being. I felt like Andy San was being a little slow just when I watched his uh, stream back. Um, but anyway, he's gone for the barracks and he's gone for the uh, pikes as well. Because obviously he's thinking the same thing. The only annoying thing is that there's this giant tree. I'm so glad they're redoing the uh, Lorien Fortress. Because obviously this gets in the way quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I think that's one reason why they're redoing it. I don't know if you guys have seen the new Lorien base model. But it sort of like wraps around the tree like uh, the way it's meant to be. It's got like the stairs uh, flowing all the way up. Uh, it's really pretty, so uh, that's kind of cool. So anyway, yeah, anyway, just, just for this game, you're gonna have to enjoy having a big tree in your way for a lot of it. Anyway, so I think Gondor's probably one of the strongest factions in the game. Um, I think they got a really solid spell work, really solid roster, but I think they're just so tremendously strong in the early game. Their fiefdom units get the horde bonuses. They got a good hero to go with them. They have Forlong. Their troops are all so cheap. I mean, Clansmen of Amadon, two fifty. And the build time on them is just really, really good. If we compare that to Lorien, whose pikes are 375, they don't get early swordsmen. You really just have to put all your faith in the archers. Um, yeah, no, Gondor's just got such a solid start, such an easy start. So anyway, that's one war glare down. Another one about to go down. Uh, Andy's going this way. I think he was just trying to rush me, maybe put me under pressure, destroy my wargs. Um, but yeah, it, with Gondor, you can just relax because you have so much... Faith in their early spam, it's uh, really, really kind of funny. So anyway, Captain's Horn, you just want that early game buff. Sometimes I go heal, but I figured I could just get that later when I um, get full on. Anyway, Horn comes out, because I'm not... Somehow his... Uh... How did they get level 2? I'm not sure how they... they... Oh, they must have got level 2 from the Warglair. Yeah, so now basically his elves are healing while running away. They're strictly speaking not in combat when they're running away, so that allows them to heal. And, uh, that was really loud. <laughs> but, uh, really loud ambient noise there. Um, but yeah, that's why elves at level 2 are really fucking annoying. And that's why I popped the uh, Captain's on there. So now we're making some swordsmen because I know he's going to be making, um, a lot of pikes. He doesn't get that early swordsman, so I'm just like, okay. Swordsmen beat pikes, we want to get more pike. Uh, we want to get more swordsmen. Plus they're cheap and we can save up for other things. Um, actually, another reason why Gondor's so strong is that we obviously, once you get the early game done, you just get your marketplace out, you don't need to research the upgrade, which just makes your eco really strong. You can take a lot of losses, and it's not actually that big a deal. We've got the archery range for the, uh, just archers and unit variety, some range damage. I decided to attack him on the flank here, and I'm <laughs> looking back, why the fuck did I do that? I, I never attacked through multiple flanks, but I guess I wasn't really attacking on this side that much. But anyway... Um, I don't think I get the builder here, but I do force him to destroy his malantry. I should say that at the time of making this video, Andy San unfortunately does have uh, COVID-19, and, uh, uh, you know, all joking aside, I hope he does pull through. Um, but I think that he said it, he said he feels fine. He 
Oni has lost his like sense of uh, taste. But it is a bit of a weird. It is a bit of a weird coincidence that he gets COVID and I'm able to beat him. So I don't know. I mean, he might he might be too proud to say, nah, it's got nothing to do with that. But uh, it might have it might have something to do with that. And obviously, we hope he pulls through because what would I do without my Andy? Anyway. So a massive fight here. I'm outnumbered. He pops the um, the Elven Horn. I forget the actual name of it. Um, but the reason why I wanted to keep fighting is his builder was out in the open, and I just wanted to kill his builder and then just quickly get out. It was worth losing those two clansmen of Lamadon for it. Um, I am attacking on this side as well because they weren't really doing anything. I, I do, yeah, I didn't get the cave troll there. And uh, look at the range on these Elven archers just tear through my troops. So yeah, they cost a bit more, but fucking hell. Lossarnak can sarn it. So yeah, now we have motherfucking Forlong the Thick. He cost 1,200 and we've still got 800 in the bank. Um, the marketplace actually hasn't even gone up yet. Of Lamadon, ready for orders. So yeah, I don't really need too many pikes now. Unless he decides to go cav, which I wasn't thinking he would go cav. And even then, they're horse archers, so their trample isn't the best. We've got the, uh, it's not leadership, it's XP bonus, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, Fallon gives you immune to fear at level 1. That's so fucking strong. It's such a good opening hero, honestly. It's so strong. So, I'm on 4 points. Andy obviously hit 5 and was able to get the stun. So Andy's a little bit ahead. I think it was killing those clansmen of Lamadon and those pikes earlier. Um, but while his troops are separated now, I've just formed en masse. And I decided to do, like, a fucking... I don't know, I didn't... I had one pike in here, but I thought we had so many archers, and we had four long. I could just rush down this cave troll. And we're immune to fear, so my troops shouldn't have just backed away. That's probably the most annoying thing about ca uh, creeping cave trolls in this. Is that they can just get uh, terrified. So anyway, cave troll is gonna go down, we're gonna get sweet money. We're at 1,200 now. I think we get like 800 from destroying a cave troll there. Let's have a look, quick look. Uh, actually it was less than that, it was like 600, okay. Anyway, here comes the marketplace. I'm still sticking with fiefdom units. Um, once you get... Once you get four long, obviously you can get the Axemen of Lossanak, which do so much damage. But I never felt the need to upgrade to Gondor, uh, to the Arnorian Archers. Um, just strength in numbers with the spam of the Blackroot Veil. Just seems to be doing it for me. So anyway, we got heal in case I decided to fuck up with Forlong. He did go with horse archers, and he does have Rumil. But basically, I guess the Lorien strat against early game Gondor is just you have to use overwhelming archers because your pikemen aren't going to do shit against clansmen. Now, I've, I've got two pikemen here, but I'm not really utilizing them that well. He's got the horse archers here. I'm not sure how well they're... How strong they are, actually. And yeah, I'm doing the old uh, Witch King strat. Rushing out uh, Denethor. People say Denethor's... A bit too cheap. I disagree. I think he's 1600, plus you have to... You have to upgrade him twice to get the summon. So you're paying over 2000... Like, you're paying more than what you would get for, like, Radagast or Boromir. Uh, Radagast. I don't know why I say Radagast. Like, I just... I was just thinking... I had the, I had the number 2,000 in my mind, and I know he cost 2,000. Anyway, all of his archers were focusing for long. For long, I don't know how he got out. That's that's no hit points right there. That's none. Um, and, yeah, it's a bit... So It's a bit strange for Mandy, because he could have killed Fall on there. And I'm not sure why he did. He was just focused on the army again. Because I would have to have spent another 800 to get him back. So at this point, my army's pretty... I don't know, it seems pretty even. I'm able to just rush out reinforcements a lot faster than he is. Denethor is out. I have the fear, I have the vision, and I have this this move. Which, you summon a hero and some citadel guards. So useful. Um, quick tip with Barathor is just auto-cast all of these. Because um, he is able to do that. One's good against heroes, one's good against troops. He's just a solid, uh, just a solid summon. Um, so yeah, Denethor is obviously a lot more powerful this time around. Kind of wasted my fear there. I was hoping to fear them this way. So that I could just trap them, but that didn't really work out. Um, we've almost got the tier 2. 
And uh, actually, it's pretty even in terms of power points. Um, both of his barracks are level 1. Let's have a look at mine. I think I just kept mine level 1. I think I need level 2 for a Loxanac. No, we don't. Weird. Oh yeah, it was at this point, I'm thinking, I don't think I'm actually going to win. That battle, I like, I got bled dry in that last battle. So what my strategy was, is I'm going to turtle for Gandalf, and I'm going to have some fun with this. We're at 3,000. I think Gandalf is like 4,000. I got the banners, maybe he was a bit less. No, I think he's... I forget how much he is, actually. He cha his price is in His price is different in every patch, in every mod. Who the fuck knows, really? Um, but I know that I was close, so I was saving up for him. And wait, what the hell? Did Denethor just use his level 10? Yeah, the level 10 just buffed Barathor. Okay. I forgot it could be placed on allied heroes as well. So yeah, I, I don't think Denethor needs a nerf. I think it is a lot of money. He is 1600 and then you pay more. So I, I, I would disagree. I think his summon is really strong, but... He is a steward, after all. Um, just don't get the Age of the Ring team talking about the movie Denethor that seems to trigger them. Um, but yeah, anyway, all my money's gone. Gandalf is coming. I wasn't too scared, though, because, like, most of his army's archers, and they're not going to do damage to buildings. We did, uh, Fallon did obviously manage to survive. If I had lost Fallon, I don't think I would have been able to get Gandalf. I had my heal ready whenever I need it. We got 10 points. There goes the stun. There goes the heal. I think I always go with the Forest of Athelion, because I think that cancels leadership. And he kept focusing for long, it was so annoying. No, I went with the Lone Tower! I was crazy. Basically, the Lone Tower is worthless unless you get the, the, fire, the fire Arrow upgrade on the Fortress. And he obviously went with the uh, Summon Archers. It was at this point I decided to make a Stables, I got the Pinneth Gillen Riders. Because his army is mostly Archers. And Denethor did actually die, so I took a lot of hits there. His tier 2 was a lot better than my tier 2. <laughs> and... <gasps> Whoa! Okay, so I, I lost two heroes here. What the f... Okay. I swear this is the one I win. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna get kited. I know how good uh, Andy is at maneuvering his troops. But we have uh, Gandalf. And it's at this time, I would expect him to upgrade to level 2. Axeman and Lawson are back. Basically, I just need to catch him once. And I'm on host, so that shouldn't be too hard. I just need to catch him once with the Wizard Blast, and we can get some levels, and we can get some lots of easy kills. Um, but yeah, I lost two heroes. Not a big deal with Gondor, because... Well, I mean, the eco is just so strong. I think I got a decent trample here, but Pinneth Galen... I mean, just so many archers, they can kill the... They won't kill the Cav on the way in, but they'll kill him on the way out. And that basically convinced me to upgrade my staples, because we're getting our Norian Knights. If he's going to go mostly fucking archers, then we're going to meet him with Cav. Like, there's no point just... Being stubborn and being like, well, I'm just going to try and kill him without trying to counter him. Like, if your army... If, if your enemy has, like, a clear... Like, uh, if, if they're stacked with one one too much of, like, one type of unit, then you might as well just try and counter it. So anyway, I think I catch him here. I think, I don't know what he was trying to hit here, but I was able to get a Wizard Blast. Definitely on host helping me here. Uh, there goes two. I know one of them was a summon, but these guys are level four. And the trample on these guys, really. I mean, they actually managed to get through, but... Oh, he did, he did love. So, Andy has Rumil and Orofin. And he was really focused on that left side because he didn't attack this right side until now. I think that might be the COVID kicking in. Like, Andy would have definitely tried to hit both flanks. He loves to do that. He loves to stretch you and, yeah, make, make, make you work for it. Anyway, I decided to counter here. I think Denethor's on his way back. I built a tower here. I'm not really sure why, just for a bit of peace of mind, but it's not going to save the farm. Let me see, I'm on 4th... No, he's on 4.30. I'm on 4.30 as well, so actually pretty even. He's ahead of me in points, though. He really got, uh... He really killed a lot of me in his attack. But wait, 6.50 and I'm on 8.25. Yeah, I think I am destroying more of his mallon trees, though. There goes the Wizard Blast. 
Making sure those horses don't come back. There's Orofin. He's got the... You can go no further. And he decided to make an Ent. Yeah, here's the Ent mood. I didn't see this Ent mood. I don't know why. Maybe it was a fortress or something. But I did not see the Ent mood. I had no idea he made Ents. Ents and Lorien. Dick move, guys. Dick move. Anyway, Forlong's back. He got the tower. He got the farm. That annoys me. He also had a hero here. Who's this? Rumil. I noticed a little red dot here, and I was, I was like, looking up here, like, where the fuck is the hero? He wasn't able to snipe my builder, but he did stop me from, um, getting the farm up. This is what annoyed me here. This is, uh, really showcases Andy's micro, but also his ability to just get out of jail. I don't know why my cav kept stopping. I wasn't sure if he stopped and started to just sort of reset their tracking. But I know I just couldn't really get away from him. Oh, really, I couldn't get close to him that much. He never actually made Haldir. I thought maybe Orofin was Haldir for a long time. I never actually bothered to click. But, uh, yeah, I think he's got... I don't think he made Haldir. I think he just got Rumil and Orofin. So, yeah, he's two points away from Eagles. I've only got five points. Wow, I didn't realize I was so behind on the PowerPoints game. Insane. As far as, far as upgrades, I went with the Bannock Arrows. Obviously, you need to regen. Level 2 is sweet. Oh, that's right. I had loads of money, so I made Boromir. Boromir is just so strong in this game. I have seen more than you know. Um, oh yeah, I used the Stone of Anarian here. And look, it even reveals the Ent moot, and I'm still like, eh, that's nothing. Don't worry about that, that's nothing. I do have Lone Tower back, but... A little more than just an annoyance here. So Andy is sticking with the Archers here. He's got some March Wardens, which, if you guys know from the last patch, March Wardens were my bane. I hated them. They do take uh, more Trample this time around. They're not, like, immune to trample. I mean, they never were, but it, sort of, it certainly felt like that, you know? Um, so he's got double ants. Most, aside from it mostly being archers. Um, this is a pretty good army. <laughs> I didn't go with upgrades, I went with heroes. I'm pulling a bottom mod here. And I got my cav in the shadows, just waiting. So this is the, this is, this is the big battle here. There goes the fear just to spread him out. His March Wardens can't do shit. Then the Cav goes in. How much how much damage did the March Wardens take? Actually, oh my god, they just destroyed those March Wardens. Yeah, really good trample damage. Finally, finally. Horn of Gondor goes in, stuns the guys over here. If he had gone with Elven Wood, he would have been immune to fear. But even so, the, the range on the Horn of Gondor is insane, dude. In fucking sane. So anyway, I went with the Garden of Athelion. I went with the second tier too. I'm crazy. I'm crazy, Jesus! I got the summon from Denethor. There's the Athelion word. He summons in the Mirkwood Archers. Not too bothered because I've still got my Cav that are uncounted currently. And if I could, if I had heavy armor and gave these guys heavy armor, then that would have been sweet. The Axemen of Lossanac with their Axemen. I'm pretty sure Axe units do bonus damage to buildings. I'm pretty sure that's the case for everyone. Oh my god. Fucking four longs new quotes are the best. Um, but yeah, Wizard Blast just using all the powers at my disposal. Here come the Eagles. Now, I was really terrified here because these Eagles last a long time. He could have actually probably soloed my fortress. And I think the reason he didn't use this fortress is because the entire time he was sneaking around the side with double Ents. Now, I was so preoccupied with this attack. I was queuing up troops with my or from my barracks just by hockeys, but I never saw the red here, and I never bothered to click back at base. So I had no idea that I had Ents hitting my fortress. <laughs> I thought I was doing so well here. I was focusing the the eagles with my archers. I think I used the dental stun here. Rumor's about to get fucked. And he gets absolutely hyucked. Axon lost that going in to do that sweet, sweet building damage. Still have no idea that his uh, Ents are destroying my fortress. Let's have a look here. Thankfully, I didn't actually have any powers I needed to use, because obviously when the fortress goes down, I can't use them. And basically when it says, that was our fortress, that's when I go, oh, that was our fortress. Um, he makes Celeborn as a last stand. Celeborn's obviously being really strong. 
Is that Haldir as well? That is Haldir. His fortress is almost... Oh no, his fortress isn't almost down, but I have enough heroes to really do a lot of damage. And Ganoth just does damage to everything. Denethor did me proud there. I think Forlong's about to die too. Yep, Forlong dies too. The Caliborn heal goes in. I haunt a Gondor just out of frustration because he killed two of my heroes. So the fortress is down. He's killing my heroes. I think that was Haldir, or is this Haldir? Who's this? Who's this? Okay, that's uh, Orifin. Anyway, he retreats. Wait, where did Ganoth go? Did, did Ganoth die? Was I just... I think... Yeah, I think I was like preoccupied just trying to find out if that was Rumil or not, or Orifin or not, and I think Ganoth died there. So yeah, Caliborn is uh, really strong. But... Boromir, with his epic armor bonus that he gets at, uh, is it level 7? Yeah, 200% armor at quarter health. And Celeborn and Haldir die, or Celeborn and uh, Orifin die. Boromir just the real fucking MVP, dude. Boromir outlived everyone, even Gandalf there. So anyway, if you look at my base, Fortress is down, Barracks is down. These Ents really, I think they need Treebeard's leadership to <laughs> be any good. And just take them, uh, take them, take their time. So, honestly, at this point, you can tell by my vision, I don't really, I can't see Jack fucking shit. I have no idea where his stuff is. I'm just sort of chasing his, uh, troops around. But I'm not that bothered, because I did have one builder I could get out. And I had the barracks here. If I hadn't, if I had no builders, if I, if, if he was able to kill my builder, then, yeah, it would have been GG. Because, like, there's no way I would have been able to get back and stop those Ents in time. Not with these fucking archers harassing me. I was thinking maybe he might have built in the corner here. That's what I would have done. So I was like just making clansmen of Lamadon, just sending them to all corners of the map to destroy these um, uh, mountain trees. I had so much money, I was able to actually rebuild my fortress. So that's going up. Uh, Gondor Eco coming through for me again. But I mean, if you just like take in that whole last battle by the fortress, like it's almost like a double-edged sword. Like we were both taking each other's fortresses down, heroes dropping left and right. Really epic battle to be a part of, honestly. And if you think how much more of an advantage I needed to fight him, I he, I had like four heroes, he had like, I think he had the same number, but I mean, Rumel and Orifin are much weaker than like, say, Boromir and all that. And yet he was still able to just kill so many by the time that I killed his. And yeah, there it goes. But yeah, I think his uh, lack of pikes really helped me. Because uh, the Honorian Cab just had a field day in that final battle. I think I still would have been able to do a number on them with uh, all the hero abilities I had, but... The uh, Cab just sort of seals the deal, you know? And look how good these guys fight. They did me proud there. They got slaughtered, but they did me proud. So anyway, as I'm coming back to kill those things, I find... Oh! Here's his base. He's made double barracks. Um, the only hero I have out on the field is Boromir, obviously, who's low. I do a Horn of Gondor, it'd be cool. Sounds in the deep. So all of Gondor knows that the, the victory that unfolded here. And then obviously my cab just doing nice. So yeah, these are his last two buildings. An epic game. GG, well played. I finally was able to beat Andy San. I don't fucking believe it. <laughs> it took a fucking pandemic for me to finally win. I think that just highlights what a bad player I am. But hey, a win's a win. And I think he calls it, I think he demolishes it here. Yeah, I got the tier 3 right at the end. And he got his tier 3 when I was taking down his fortress. Oh, man. Nope, he doesn't demolish it. He fights to the last. And there it is. I finally beat Andy Mother Furin San. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. I'll see you all next time with more Biff Me content. Peace.